Good evening, confirm sir. if you can yes, hear me. Okay, good evening. Good so, my name is evening, Elijah sir. Falabi, and um, I'll be taking us through this section. And um, what we'll be discussing is online safety. So, um, I'll just employ everyone, like the host rightly said, to pay attention and let's ensure that we are not distracted so that when we go out there, to, you know, to train people, we are able to, um, you know, give them our best, right? So I'm trying to share my screen now. Please let me know once my screen comes up and you can see my screen. All right. Please let me know when you can see my screen. Once it comes up and you can see, just let me know. Okay. Um, what's going on? Okay. 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 Yes, please confirm you can see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen. All right, thank you very much. So, well, before we start this class, like I mentioned, my name is Elijah Falabi, and uh, I'm a safe online advocate, or so what we call digital literacy, as it were. And um, I've been doing this for some time. i you know, participated in training over 4,000 youth and young adults across Lagos, as well as um, not only Lagos, I mean across Nigeria as well as also, you know, taking training, the trainer session on, you know, staying safe online. So I want you to pay attention and it's going to be a lively class and um, any, I can, you know, summon you to answer any question or to get your contribution, please kindly just put uh, whatever your thought is in the chat box, you know, when you are asked to do so. Right. So, but before we go ahead, I would like to just meet everyone briefly. Just unmute. Tell me your name, and probably in just ten seconds, tell me your name and maybe any other thing you want us to know. Let's just get to know each other. Thank you. One after the other. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Timothy Romano. Hello. Good evening. Right. My name is Awola Jaesta. All right. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Shama Benedicta. Hello, good, good evening. My name is Disto. Papa Tundi Awe. Papa Tundi Awe. Go ahead. Good evening, Mr. Star. My name is Abio Dumbuko. Abio Dumbuko. Thank you. Yes. Hello, good evening, sir. My name is Addis Omiolu Atobi. Addis Omiolu Atobi. Thank you. Good evening, sir. My name is Alola Demuteo Abiola. You are Biola. Thank you. Uh, my name is Anusti Favor. Anusti Favor. And I'm also seeing the names in the chat box too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Shama Benedicta. Shama Benedicta. Got him. Thank you. All right. I think that's everyone, right? Please let's mute ourselves. Your name is what? All right, thank you very much. Demita Emmanuel. So let's just mute ourselves. And um, if you know you have not introduced yourself, I mean, the chat box is there. Just put in your name. So, like I mentioned, safe online. That's what the subject of this discussion will be. Please mute yourself if you are not talking. I can hear some background noise. All right. So, that's what the this will be all about. So, I know we are um, supposed to be a trainer who go out there to train people on how to stay safe online. So it's important to let them understand why we are trying to, I mean, the intent of, um, you know, this session, you know, people are falling victim of online vices here and there. You, will, I mean, the commonest one is when you hear people say, oh, I had worked all my life, I had saved, and all of a sudden, at one point or the other, you just hear stuff like, oh, I just realized that all the money I had in my bank account is withdrawn and I did not initiate such withdrawal. So we've, we have seen that a lot of people are falling victim for online vices. And that's one of the reasons why this session is imperative to you as a person and to 
those you'll be training. So you need to first even understand what all this is before you now go out there to train people. So I want us to pay rapt attention. So let's just continue. Please confirm you can see hear me and you can see my screen. Very well, sir. Good. So it's always important to appreciate statistics a lot. You know, I don't joke with that as a person. You know the reason? Because numbers don't lie. Yes, numbers don't lie. So what we are trying to achieve here is to give a quick statistics, to let them understand the reason why the session, what you're about to explain to them, to let them understand why it is quite important, right? I mean, there's a statistics that computer networks phones are vulnerable to, you know, siege from hackers, viruses, which has led to loss of personal sensitive information. What are you trying to let them understand here? That look, one of the reasons why you have to pay rapt attention in this session is like the example I gave earlier on, of people who will save, I mean, they had earned money for 25, 35 years of their service. And one day, one hacker somewhere will just, you know, wipe out all the money. And it looks like the person is going to start all over again. These are some of the things. Because one of the, you know, issues with technology is because it's the fact that, you know, there are hackers everywhere who are out there to get your personal sensitive information. And I mean, you, the question you ask is, what are your personal sensitive information? We'll still get there. Because one of the reasons to actually, you know, you know, get people when it comes to anything is when you get to know about, I mean, of their sensitive information. For instance, I know your name. For instance, I know when you see sensitive information, I'm talking about things that are personal to you, things that is not for public consumption. But one way or the other, people get to know. Those are some of the disadvantages of you know our phones technology here and there because every minute even as i'm speaking here taking this session with you we are sharing information it's a flow right over the network as i'm trying to you know take the tot session i'm sharing my screen over there you can see i am speaking you realize that even for instance even on this zoom call for instance there are meetings that can even be recorded or even transcripted that even after the meeting you can get the transcripts and you get to see everything i said you know, written in words. I mean, that's the generation we find ourselves. And also it comes with some of these vices. And why is this important? Why is it also important? You are trying to let them know in this light, the reason why it's important for them to pay attention to this, right? And you let them know that, look, over 310,000 people have been affected by this, this online vices we are talking about, vulnerability of data, to the point that 10 banks in America were affected, according to Daniel Solon. So what you want to let them know is, is that if 10 banks in America that are sophisticated technology-wise and are investing every now and then to build their firewalls and make sure that the information of their clients are secured over their network can fall victim for this, then who am I? Who are you? Who are those people you will train? So everybody stand the chance of falling victim for this. But the good news is that one of the reasons why you are taking them this session is to open their eyes to some of those, you know, things so that they will be more aware and now do better. Because the most important thing, I mean, we all know that knowledge is power, right? And of course, I believe application is powerful because it's one thing to know, it's another thing to apply. But do you know the good news is that, I mean, it's, 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 it's along the pipeline, you know, you need to know first before you can apply. What I don't know, I cannot apply. So you let them know that that's one of the reasons why this session is important because they need to know before they now apply whatever they know. And to even, to, you know, to crown it all, between 2013 and 2015, even Facebook and Google lost about $100 million to these guys, to ACA, to tell you the reason why, you know, online safety is very, very key for anyone using the internet. The internet is not just there for us to pick up our phone, share things, do things. No, 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 no. It goes beyond that. And also, I mean, you know, the current world population, I think as at this year, is about 8 billion people. And if we are 8 billion people, I know that means that over 4.5 of us use the internet. That means over half of the population of the world use the internet. That's one of the reasons why it is important to understand the devices, the online devices, and how to stay safe online. If you are still following, just put in the chat box, we are following. Ah, I hope these people are following me. I hope you've not gone to cook noodles in the kitchen. If you are following, put in the chat box, I am following. Timmy Tayo said we are. 
Okay, you are following. What about others? I am following. That's good. Anusi, I'm following. Addis on me, I'm following. Okay, I'm following. Stephen, I'm following. Buko Abiodu, I'm following. Nice one. Nice one. Thank you, guys. Thank you for following. So let's have a smooth ride. So the next slide is now what you want to kind of, you want to just tear them up with just a little game. You know, I call it the habit game. Just to kind of get their thoughts and kind of engage with them. Right. You tell them if you have never done this before, what I'll be displaying in a bit, score yourself zero. If you had done it before, score yourself one. If you had tried it more than once, score yourself two. So at the end of the day, by the time you look at the accumulative scores, you see that is what they have done. So you want to ask them, I log on to the internet every day, or I use the internet more often on a daily basis. Don't forget the score um sheet or the marking guide as you may call it, <laughs> you know. If you have never done it, zero. If you have tried it once, one. If you do it, try it more than one, two. Or if you think that you are in a place where you cannot really get them to score themselves, you can just use it to engage them, ask them to raise their hand, wave their hand, if you have done it, if you have not done it before. So I log on to the internet every day. You see a lot of them raising their hand. Yes, yes, of course I do. You see, you ask some of them, I connect to my friends, clients, customers through the social media. Most of them will tell you, yes, I do, I do. They raise you. So don't forget. The essence of this slide is to engage them, you know, just to give them that perception that, look, everything is not, we are not just here to talk, 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 because people's attention span are very, very low, right? So we are not just here to talk, 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 talk. We want to get to engage them. You ask them, I share my information on all social media and do. Yes, they will tell you. I conduct a Google search. They will tell you whether they do. I share a broadcast message without verifying the authenticity of the information. This is where you begin to get their diverse thoughts. Some will say, ah, no, I just feel, you know, some will say, no, I, I make sure I confirm before I share, right? And you want to give them instances, like, you know, instances where you see a chart on WhatsApp, they will tell you, oh, uh, maybe the federal government is sharing 50,000 to every household. Um, Just click this link, register. And you want to just share practical, you know, illustration to let them know. And some of them will tell you, oh, truly, there are some times that because of the eagerness to share the opportunity with my contact, I don't really check when I see 50,000 with the way this economy is. I just share to my family and friends. Let them also click the link and get. I mean, the intention is to make sure that, you know, your family take advantage of the opportunity in good time. Not knowing that, oh, it might be a fake link. It might... And one very funny thing about link, which I will discuss in a bit with that. Sometimes when you click most of these links that are unsecured, or immediately you click it and you get to the landing page, all your personal information are downloaded on the other end. Do you see that, guys? Do you see that? But a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. You ask them, do you comment? Have you dragged somebody before on social media or you get dragged on social media? Or you've made comment online like you go explain, 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 no evidence, comrade, all those things in the mod, or somebody is saying something on online, and you say, hmm, Lori Rock, you know, like you are lying, all those kind of things. So you ask them just to get it, or people say, fear women, no, those kind of things, or any other popular slang on social media. You ask them, do I, I visit websites to source for information? Some of them will tell you, in fact, most of them will tell you yes, because everybody, you know, always have this Google search and all of that. So I share my PIN or password with someone. Yeah, they will tell you, oh, I used to share my PIN or password, though. in fact, I'll tell them, this is my ATM PIN, go me withdraw money and come back. You get their thoughts. I have received a call, text message from a froster. In fact, some of us on this call, you can testify to some of these things where people will tell you to say, hello, um, I just realized that. Uh, no, not even that. They will tell you, oh, hello, um, your bank account, we need to reactivate something. Please send your BVN. Let's reactivate it for you. If you are here and you've received that call in recent time, please signify on the chat box. You know you've received that kind of call in recent time. You have to send your BVN, blah, 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 blah. You want to upgrade your account, update your account for you, and all those things. This common way of getting, you know, their target. Or... Yes, the entire you said that I have, yeah. Yes, Stephen said yes. Good. So it's rampant now. When you see people being called, ask them to send their BVN, you know. I mean, I mean, banks naturally will not even call you for that kind of thing. If they will have to, you know, reach you for that kind of thing, they prefer to send email address. And if they will call, you will know if you are speaking to your bank, right? And the last part you want to tell them is, oh, if you are here and you connect to available Wi-Fi, especially when it is free, 
raise your hand. In fact, you get their reaction more at this point because at this point, you see all of them with your Yes, I used to, especially when it is free, I will use, uh, connect, I download. Okay, Jilu said that bar, like more like so many times. Yes, I've received such message. Alala de mutu. Yes, it's, it's rampant. I mean, that's why we're all on this call to be informed and to now go back to our respective, um, you know, sessions and, you know, tell these people this good news so that we reduce a lot of people falling victim for all this. So a lot of them can connect to Wi-Fi, especially when it is free. What you want to tell them from this session is that any of these things, if they do it, it's not a sin. Doing it does not mean, oh, they don't know anything. No, that's not the point. Stephen even said, yes, I do connect. I love your sincerity, Stephen. You must be a very sincere person. Yes. Everybody wants to do that, right? In fact, when I when I take this session, there's a personal story about myself that I usually share. Maybe I will share it in a bit, yeah. So it's important. You you tell them that look, the fact that you do any any of this thing is not is not a big deal, right? That's why we are all here, right? So all learn. And it's not even bad to connect to Wi-Fi when they are free, but just that you want to tell them what to do in that kind of situation. And that's the reason for the session. Next is you want to tell them what the internet is. So we want to start from the very basics. What is the meaning of the internet? So you ask them, guys, what do you understand by the internet? Because I believe something so strongly, you cannot begin to give a baby um, solid food if you don't start with thin as little as milk. Right? When we were all babies, we were giving milk. When we were growing, we started eating all manner of things, rice. But nobody started giving us rice at, at, at age, age two days or three days or something. Right? So we build the momentum. So you want to get their thought. What do you understand by the internet? They tell you, you also tell them that internet kind of links computer together, allow information to flow or data to travel from one computer to the other. That's what we are doing here now. Internet... <laughs> Who is that? Mute yourself. All right. Thank you. So internet makes this connectivity possible. I mean, I am here now somewhere in Lagos. I'm connected to you guys, maybe across different states, God knows, or even in different countries. And we're able to share information, right? I'm sharing my screen. You can see my screen. What makes it possible is the internet. And it, I mean, sometimes you need a web browser to connect to the website or web pages. The internet connects computers together, right? So that's what you want to let them know here. Yeah? So that's not. So the next thing you want to tell them what does internet do for communication, for research, for entertainment, and work? I mean, depending on your audience, if some of if they are graduates, I mean, a lot of them did projects in school, and at one point or the other, they had to go online to get information about their project topic, about everything. So for communication, even at work and everything. So it's like just a network of computers that are linked together over a network worldwide, right? And it can be used either wired or wireless, right? Then you also want to tell them what a search engine is. You can even ask them, what do they understand by a search engine? They will tell you. Of course, we all know what search engine are, right? Can Let's go to the chat box and just give me an example of search engine. Anyone? Example of search engine. Just to be sure uh -huh. you're following me. <laughs> yes, Timitayo. Timitayo is always following. Timitayo said Google. Motorayo said Google. Adiola said Chrome. Mm. Okay. Any other person? I mean, Google is the, is the most popular, right? We have others like Wikipedia. So it's also a search engine, right? Where you want to get information about stuff and, um, you know, amongst others, right? Yes. So thank you very much. So you also want to tell them the meaning of search engine. So search engine just help us find information that we are looking for online using keywords or phrases. A good example is Google. Um, another one for the one for Microsoft now, uh, Bing. Yes, yes. That's what I'm trying to recall. Another example is Bing, right? Bing is also an example of search engine. What do, does search engine help you to do? All you need to do is to put whatever you are looking for there. Once you put it there, it helps you go around the web, world wide web, and pick everything it can find possible that been that is on any website and that has that keyword. That's why on Google, if you put just as little as article D T H E, 
it will bring for you every website that has discussed or where you can find that D on the web. And it pops up with the, I mean, with the help of a link. You see different links linking to different websites. And you can, so what search engine help you to do is to result, is to return your result as quickly as possible on whatever information you have with anywhere you can find it online. Millions of websites, it brings them together. And that's what Google helps you to do. As I see that in like nanosecond, if you have a very strong internet connection, you put it on Google, you get it. Or on Bing, so you put it there, you get it. You get your information from every, from different websites, right? So those are example of search engine. Like Chrome that we are mentioning, those are web browser and not search engine, right? So only if some of them personally develop their own search engine. So search, what search engine only does is that it allows you to search for anything present on any website and you have to bring them together right on a single page so that's what search engine is you want to also tell them then the question you want to ask them is, are you secure do you think you are secure on the internet you get their thoughts at this point because don't forget the essence of this whole thing your presentation is not complete until you are able to engage your audience i believe so strongly in that so that's why you have some of these slides to get their thoughts. Let them talk. Don't just be there and you are talking, 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 talking. At the end of the day, they are just tired. So make sure that you still have them with you all through whatever duration you are spending, you know, training them. You ask them, do you think you are secure on the internet? You get their thoughts. Some of them will say sometimes. Some of them will say, yes, yes, I believe. Some of them will say, you understand. So we need to get their divergent opinion, their diverse opinions to be able to know what we are doing. Then the next thing you want to talk about is sensitive information. What makes us know when you are secure on the internet? Number two, what you need to know is sensitive information. Then you want to ask them what are sensitive information. Then they will tell you, of course, some of them will share their thoughts. Before you display this slide, you ask them, get their thoughts, right? And after you hear some of them will tell you, this is information that you should not share with other person. This is information that should be protected from other person. Information on this shouldn't be shared publicly or privately with anyone. And truly, that's what sensitive information are. Sensitive information can be your BVN. It can be your ATM card details. And your PIN, it can be your phone and SIM password, it can be your national identity number, it can be your permanent voter's card, it can be your medical record. Somebody will ask, how is medical record the personal information? They can ask you. It's a personal information because when people get to know what your medical record is, for instance, they can use it against you. I, I used to give an example of while I was still in school at the University of Lagos, you know. You know, if you are in a room and people know that you are asthmatic, for instance, I used to know one roommate like that that was asthmatic. There was a time when, um, you know, he had an issue with one of the other roommates. Do you know what this other roommate was doing? This other roommate now intentionally went ahead to start trying things in the room to frustrate that guy because he knows that one of the things that, you know, steers up, you know, asthmatic patients is when they are in a place that is stuffy and all of that because they had little issue. But he would not have done that if he was not aware of that person's medical record. That, oh, this person is asthmatic. So you want to tell them one of the reasons why they should not share their personal information because these are things that people will use and use against them. Why is permanent voters, how is permanent voters card? It sends information, they can ask you. Every PVC, if you have one, check. It has a number by the left-hand corner that is unique only to that PVC. That with that number, if I have it, anybody who have it can go on, you know, database, INEC database or any other database, they have a way of going through all those things, which, I mean, it's, it's within, it's outside the scope of this class. You know, they put it there and they'll get all your information because before you register for your PVC, you must have put in your name, your date of birth, where you live, some personal things about you. That's why that number is unique to only your own card. That's why you should not share with anyone. Your NIN, you agree with me now that now the federal government is doing everything to integrate systems together. I mean, I remember some years ago, you can write WAIC without NI. Now, even WAIC, ordinary WAIC, you cannot write without NI. You need your NI. You see secondary school students running everywhere to do the NI. If you want to do international passport, you need your NI. They don't need to come and ask you what your name is, your name, your date of birth. No. With your NI, all those systems are integrated with government and their sister agencies. They, they've had a way of integrating those systems together. That just at the, at the point of imputing your NI, all your information pops up. I don't need to ask you what your name is. In fact, I was sharing lately at one of the sessions I had just this weekend, this last weekend, or I think on Saturday, right? I was sharing with them that, look, if you're in Lagos, for instance, and you have this cowrie card, 
that you can use to for translation this BRC and you know ferry or anything. If you had gone to collect the card, you see that all they needed to register that card for you is just your phone number. They'll just ask you to tell us your phone number. Once you tell them your phone number, they'll tell you are Mr. Susan. Because I mean the the systems is integrated, right? So much that you cannot afford just to be sharing any personal information at any you know slightest opportunity. Another one is the ATM card details. Some of us we are very used to it. Say, what's there? Is my pin? You tell somebody my pin is one, two, three, four. Why well, I mean we draw five thousand? Those are some of the things you don't want to do. And also your ATM card too is very, very powerful, particularly the CVV number at the back. That three number at your ATM card is very, very powerful that anybody who had access with, you know, intention to, um, you know, use it to their own advantage and to your disadvantage. With that CVV, they can, you know, do a lot in your bank account. So it's important and your BVN. So you want to tell people that they should not share this information with unknown person or sometimes even people they know because you never can tell who is out there to harm you. So they conform, they con because they contain information that can be used to scam you. Another thing that, is, that follows your sensitive information is your privacy. Let everybody unmute and say privacy. Just to be sure you are following me. At this privacy. Point. Privacy. 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 Oh, that's good. These privacy. people are not... Privacy. I can see that you guys did not just join and you are cooking noodles in the kitchen. You. you are following <laughs> Right. Somebody say to you. Yeah. <laughs> right. I can I can imagine my mind. Privacy. 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 I'm sure I hear I'm not cooking with you guys. So privacy, right? Now, one, one very important thing. I, I hope you guys can still hear me. Hey, my internet is unstable. Okay. Can you still hear yeah, me? We can hear you. We can hear you. All right. My internet yes, was saying my internet is unstable. We can hear you. Yeah, can privacy. Hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Privacy. Yeah. Why is privacy important? We deliberately put this privacy back, the sensitive information, because privacy is just an extension of sensitive information. Let's go into it. Like I told you, our intention is to make sure that you know we engage people. You want to ask them, what do you think will happen? Which, if everybody is entitled to have access to certain information like your name, your PIN, everything about you, what do you think is going to happen? The people have access to everything about you. What do you think will happen? They know your name, they know your PIN. What do you think will happen? What do you think will happen if they have access to your information, your photos? And do you think you can control it? That's the most important thing. Do you think you can control what you put online there? Do you think you can control your, what you want people to see? Right? Do you think you can console your posts, your photos, and everything you post online? Guys, let's go on this ride together to uncover that. While you answer that question within you, and while your audience answer that question within you, let's also paint this scenario for them. As soon one of your audience is Jacob, in fact, I'm using you now as my audience. One of you is Jacob, and I'm having a conversation with a lady, one fine lady I met in school, somewhere in school. What are the information you think I will share? Or let me ask you in the chat box, or let me just get the thoughts of maybe two persons is okay because of our time. What are the things you will likely share? I just need the thoughts of two persons out of this. And you are not just tell you are not just telling me what are the likely things you will share. You are also telling me why. You just met a lady. So let me have just two persons. Just unmute, tell me your name, and go ahead. What you think you will share? The lady you just met in school and why? Please go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Your name, please. Yeah, my name is Raji Olamiko. Raji, you have the floor. Go ahead. Yes. So if I met someone, I think what I would like to share is just my name and my phone number. Your name and your phone number. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Why? Because there has to be a reason. So to I'm ask. sharing my, my name because you can only identify every individual first by their name. I'll be so sure what are you writing on my screen? I, sorry for interrupting you. I didn't in your life. I was that name. I thought one of the rules of this class, given by the host, is that you don't write on the screen now. Somebody's writing on my screen. But please go ahead. Sorry for interrupting you. Okay. And I will you are the share one writing. Please stop it. Okay. So that is the first way I will share my name. And then um, okay. me sharing my phone number. It's because 
um, in one way or the other, um, I may need to be contact for uh, you know an official or any any information that that is within me or um, official. I, I just I think I will share the phone number just because of communication outside um, this week. Mm, that's good. I love that. Thank you very much. What was your name again? Sorry. My name is Raji Olamipo. Raji Olamipo. Thank you. I need one more person. What do you think you'll be sharing? Now, for gender equality's sake, I need a lady. Assume that you are meeting a guy for the first time, you know, and you're having a conversation. What will you share on this screen and why? Let's just take one more lady as we proceed quickly. <laughs> Uh, what is okay, happening so to our ladies? The, hello, hello, good evening, it's Esther. Okay, Esther, go ahead. Okay, have so the floor. if I'm meeting a guy for the first time, of course, I would want to introduce my name. I want to say my name to him. Then, of course, I would also want to have a conversation to know his interest. His interest will, okay. uh, will determine how far we can go if he has my kind of my kind of music. Uh my perspective about life and stuff. So that would determine if we are going to sustain that friendship. Okay, yeah. so you are saying what you share with him is just your name? I'm saying I'm going to be sharing my name. I will, and of course, try to have a conversation with such person to determine his area of interest. Okay, okay. So it's area of interest now inform you of whatever information now, you can share yes, on the this kind of screen. information I want to divulge with him, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. You know, why I need to stress the fact that, I mean, nobody is right, nobody is wrong. We are all right, I mean. Nobody is wrong, I meant to say. We are all right, right? What you decide to share here is peculiar to you alone. And you are not, if you decide to share your name, I mean, even your account balance. So imagine you are talking to a lady as a guy, and maybe you are trying to ask the lady out, for instance, and the lady is saying, No, oh, there are others with us. So you want to stand tall. You now start saying, Do you know my what? I want this, I want that. Or you want to tell the lady your, you know, everything about you, your favorite meal, and all those things, right? So what we are trying to emphasize with this slide is that what you will share right is not restricted you know it depends on you and whatever you share here yeah, the most important thing is that whatever you share here yeah, is your responsibility and you must have to ask your question like the um the two speaker now said you must have asked yourself if i share these things will, will this thing be used against me if you have answered those questions and you, you have a perception of who that person is, then it will guide you, right? So no one is wrong. No one is right. So if you're having this slide and somebody is saying, I will share my most embarrassing moment, I will share everything here, don't look, the, don't look at the person like, oh, who is this one? No. It's their decision, right? But what you let them know is that everything, it is a question of privacy. Then the question is, what is privacy? So privacy is simply knowing what information to share and not to share. Simple. And whichever information you wish to share, it's important to know that it's your responsibility I've said it, to protect your information. If I decide to share my account balance with somebody I'm just meeting, I should know that it's my responsibility. And whatever come out of it, I accept it. Right? And that is why we're also trying to stress here that one of the reasons why you have to be careful with what you share is that even those cameras, they are out there to get some of this, your personal information to their own advantage. For instance, you meet someone for the first time, you are telling the person, oh, I do this, I do that. This is even my, you know, when I even, you know, my all my hard pin, for instance, I like using pin that, you know, that are very simple, like one, two, three, four. I don't like stress, like zero, 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 zero. Oh, the person will feel, oh, that's what your pin looks like. That's good. And before you know it, you you see that even with information like your locations, amongst other things, right? Kidnap if, right, well, of course, let's not even go too far. We are in a country where you hear kidnapping is rampant everywhere, right? You see people just sharing their location. I stay here between nine and twelve. I'm here between two and four. You find me here. You find me here. No, you don't want to do that. You have to vet who you are speaking. So all these things are a question of privacy. And another thing you want to stress is that you have to be careful of what you post online. 
Why should you be careful of what you post online, guys? Because internet does not forget. Put in the chat box if you are following. The internet does not forget. And I will tell you why I'm saying this. The internet does not forget. If you are following, put it in the chat box. The internet does not forget. Yes. The internet does not forget. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Afusat. Thank you. Okay, these people are following. Yes, Choma, the internet does not forget. Buko Abiodun, the internet does not forget. Yes, that's why you should be careful what you post on like, You want to tell them, you know why? I have seen situations where you know, I give this ex this particular example. You know, when I'm taking this, I've seen situations where people are denied of visa to enter certain countries. You know why? Because before you'll be granted the visa to any country, they do a background check, right? They do, for example, if you want to enter countries like this, um, you know, this Arab world, for instance, you know, they are very big on, um, what's, what's the right word now? They are very big on morals. For instance, you hear things like in the Arab nation, maybe as a lady, you don't hold on with a guy in the public, you know. For some of us who watch the last World Cup, you see some of the, um, you know, some of the strict rules that they put in place in Qatar, for instance. So sometimes you see, I know of someone particularly, they will go and check your post, even on Facebook, since you open that Facebook account. And maybe you are somebody, for instance, I'm just saying, maybe the person is someone who had posted you know, you know, things that are lewd. For instance, maybe you are in a place at the beach side somewhere wearing maybe something, um, you know, very revealing. You post online. When they see it, they just feel like, oh, this does not align with our values. You see such person being denied visa. But whatever you post online, even though you think you have deleted it, the internet does not forget. That's the point I'm making. So you have to have a good digital footprint. What you know does not fit into every aspect, every, anything. It is better you don't share them online, right? That's what we are saying. So you want to tell your audience to be careful with what they share online because the internet does not forget. Don't go and share things online that in some years' time, it will become a problem for you. And you should be careful with what you share. It's very, very important. That's what you want to stress there, right? And what the funniest thing about this is that whatever you post online, so you can control it. You can control who sees your posts. This is an example of a maker who is an upcoming artist who just recorded his first single. Who do you think you want to share his post with? Let's just answer the chat. Do you think it's the friends, friends of friends, or the public? Of course, we are aware on Facebook. You can share with your friends, friends of friends, or public. Who do you think this guy who is an upcoming artist who just recorded his first single? in the studio. Who do you think you want to share it with out of these three options we have in here? Stephen said public. Okay? Let me have one more thought. Timmy Tyron said public. Okay? Everybody saying public. Okay, Choma said friends. Timmy Tokpe to is saying friends. Every other person public. Afu said friends. Public. Afu said friends. Okay? Alright, thank you very much, guys, for your input. I mean... Who you want to share it with depends on who he wants to view his posts. It's his personal duty. For instance, if, for instance, if, um, what do you call it? If a maker, for instance, is trying to gain popularity, he might want to share it with the public. If what the maker is trying to do, is trying to get feedback from people on his first single, he might want to share with his friends or friends of friends to get feedback to say, oh, Listen to this music, everybody. What do you think? Do you think the sound quality is good? Do you think, you know, people want to hear this? Who do you think this we are, you know, we apply to? If he's open to get the feedback, he might share with his friends. But if he wants to be something, if he's speaking for popularity, for instance, he might share with the public. What we are trying to achieve with this slide is to let people know that, look, whatever you decide to share, you can control who view your posts. You can share who views your posts. Right, that is why on Facebook, on WhatsApp, and on Instagram, you can control who views your post. On Facebook, you can you can be friends, friends of friends or public. You have the settings. On WhatsApp, it can be your contact. It can be my contact. Except, you know, I remember back then when we were in school, I used to have one friend like that in my class. 
one Christian friend. Anytime he's in a church doing things that are churchy and he's, he's capturing the moment he wants to share, he will share it on WhatsApp and tag his parents. They will see it. But anytime he wants to, you know, enjoy, you understand what I'm trying to say, now maybe party, he used this option to say my contact accepts or to share only with friends on Facebook so that his parents will not see. So what we are trying to say is that you can control your target audience. And that's what you want to tell people there. That look, despite the fact that we are in an age where our information is everywhere, still you can control who you want to view whatever you are posting. On Instagram, you can decide to make your account private. Yes. You make your account private, private for instance. This way you can control who views your profile. Yes. So these are some of the things you want to put them through. The other thing I'm very big on, particularly on privacy, is cookies. Right? We all know what cookies are. <laughs> Don't be like one woman. When I was having this same training session around digital safety at the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment in Ikoi, <laughs> at that training, I don't know, I can't forget. I asked, I said, what do we understand by cookie? One of those women stood and said, cookies. All of us know that one. Is it not that biscuit I used to buy for my children? Kiss. <laughs> you know, we all laughed over it, but the most important thing is that it's not, it's not a crime sometimes when you don't know something. You understand? But it continues to be a crime when you know and you fail to apply. So I embraced that at that point. And now it's no more cookies. Although it was funny, everybody laughed and all of that. But of course, I'm sure that by the time she now left that session, at the point of leaving that session, I mean, I mean, she's well informed. She now knows what cookies mean. So cookies, you must have been seen. In fact, I need you to unmute. I just need to. When you go to website, you see something like accept all cookies or reject all cookies, yes or no? I just need one or two people to unmute to confirm yes. that. Do you see yes, something like that? Good. Yes. Good. So one thing about cookies that you need to yes. know is that they are like, like some photo, you know, advertiser that allows that website to track your preferences, you know, your location yes. and your preferences online. And all those things, when they are tracked, it is being shared with your web browser and it will now be shared with the administrator of that website you are visiting. You understand? So that when they understand your preference, they can serve you content, for instance, that go in line with your preference. I will explain better for you to understand. Now, when you go on the website, it asks you, right, to accept cookies, right? Now, when you accept that cookie, what that cookie does is that it gets all your information, your preference, like what you were viewing, your interaction on the website, and it's been saved. So that when you visit that website again, you are saved something related to that content. Let me give you an instance you'll be able to relate with. How many of you notice that if you go on Instagram, for instance, no, no, let me even say Instagram. Let me say you go on Jumia. If you have Jumia app, for instance, you go on Jumia, you check some things out that you like to order, or you didn't even check, you didn't even order, but you just check. How many of you notice that when you go on Facebook, for instance, on the Facebook, normal Facebook page and you are checking, when you scroll a bit downward, you see that you see some sponsored ad. You see some of the things that you check in your Jumia app or anything that relates to it. Maybe what you checked was, you yeah. know, accessories, phones. Yeah. Thank you for confirming that. Thank you very much. You know, that you see that one of the things, cookies, that's one of the handwork of cookies. When you accept those cookies, they download your preferences. They see the things you view. They see your interaction. So in the, it's on that basis. Yes, that's true. They, exactly. So it's on that basis, they now, you know, save you content. So, so it, but you know what you want to tell your audience in this slide very, very strongly, because I'm very big on this. What you want to tell your audience in this slide very, very strongly is that, guys, look, it's not bad to accept cookies. But if you must accept cookies, ensure that the website is encrypted. Put in the bracket. What did I say, everybody? The website is what? Encrypted. If you must accept cookies, you must ensure that the website is encrypted. How do you know when a website is encrypted? One of the easiest ways to know when a website is encrypted is that at the top of the web browser, you see something like a padlock beside where you have the URL. Are you guys following? You see something like a padlock? Yes, please. Yes. That padlock is telling you that at least what you share on that website is secured. Yes, we are following. Yes. So it shows that it is secured. So what I'm saying in essence is that if you must accept cookies because it is spying into your privacy, you must ensure that at least the website is secured. Very, very important. Then the next thing that's very important to, um, you know, your privacy, right? I've mentioned this.
they can't hear you again. Can you hear me? Sorry, guys. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. Yes, we can hear you now. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I was saying yes, that another thing to understand is permission, right? Permission. You should understand. Permission, right? How many of you think that when you download application, it will ask you for permission to your camera, permission to see your contacts, permission to your gallery? Have you seen that before? Yes, yes, sir. yes, sure. Should I get yes. something here, guys? It's very strong. Yeah, that's the question was asked. Yes. Yes. The question was asked where? Permission to monitor so your interest, to monitor your activities. App. On this same app you guys are using, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Now, no. let me now tell you, let me tell you something, because, you know, like I mentioned, we are all learning. Both the trainer and people you go and train, you yourself, we are learning. Now, one thing about permission is that there are some applications that cannot function without those permissions. But sometimes there are still some permission that when you deny it, the application will still function. Do you know that there are some applications that when you accept permission to your camera, they can spy on what's on you through your phone's camera, your front camera? Are you aware? Yes, they are. As a matter of fact, there are people who get their target audience just through that alone. That's what they do. They go and develop an application or software, maybe that people want to use. It could be from to convert documents, maybe from Word to PDF. They will now begin to ask for permissions, like your camera, like some things that somebody is unmuted, and I can hear the background noise. Please, can you mute yourself? Thank you. Thank you. Right? So, you will now begin to realize that what is this particular app? Why is it requiring my camera? I only need you to um, probably probably make call, for instance. Make call. Why do you need permission to my camera? But some of us don't know. Once we just download the application, we just want to accept everything we see. Accept camera. Yes, permit. Accept to and I mean to have access to my contact. Permit. Access to gallery. Permit. You are just permitting everything. Make a this software, this application can spy. Some of these scammers, they develop application. You think those applications are trying to address the need, but at the side, they are also trying to also download your sensitive information on the other side. What I'm saying is that you have to be careful with application that you allow permission. If you must allow permission, it must be application from a trusted source. That's my point. From a trusted source, you have to allow such. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? If you are following, say we are following. Yes, sir. We are following. 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 Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Another thing I want to talk about is Wi Fi. Wi Fi. Hmm. Wi Fi. You see, one thing about it, you know, we asked in the game we did earlier on, we asked if how many of us connect to Wi Fi, especially when they are free. I mean, all of us alluded to that fact. That will connect to Wi Fi when they are free, right? Somebody is unmuted. Once you are done talking, don't forget, always mute yourself. Thank you. Wi Fi. Now, have you ever connected to a public Wi Fi before? You want to ask your audience, they will tell you, ah, Of course, yes, you know. Have you connected to a Wi Fi before to download movie, log on to Facebook, WhatsApp? They will tell you, Ah, yes, now, why won't I connect? Especially when it is free. Very free. Mm. How many of you have used the Wi Fi to transfer money to customer on a public Wi Fi or just transfer money? Um, use your mobile banking app. They will tell you, ah, we do it. How many of you update your application? I've done it to public, you see that. So, exactly. So, they will tell I've you, done you done it. it. Now, let me also share my own personal ex experience with you. If you stay in Lagos here, you realize that sometimes about four or five years ago, when all these blue BRT first came to Lagos, you know, when you bought BRT bus from Friday, you used to say my 12 or you could do it's just 100 naira if you could recall. Yeah. So, do you know what I do? I will leave my house, then I will stay in a Friday. I will leave my house at Friday, enter BRT bus with 100 naira. Do you know, dress as if I'm going to one office. Do you know what I'm going there to do? You remember no, those no, buses no. come with Wi Fi? It's to go and use Wi Fi. That's what I do. I now enter, start downloading movies, doing all manner of things. 
by the time there was one faithful day, by the time I got to my 12, I'm not done downloading what I want to download. I alighted from that BRT bus. I entered on that one again, back to party to continue what I'm downloading on the Wi Fi. Now, you can see what I was saying that all of us at one point or the other might have been victim of it. But the point is, what I knew now, if I knew it five years ago, I would have done better. Right? Because you cannot give what you don't have. You, you, mm -hmm. you, you, if you know better, you do better. Right? That is life. It's a, it's a general principle about life. Right? So, what you want to tell your audience here is that we know you must have connected to public Wi-Fi. In fact, you do it. You go, but you don't want to connect to a public Wi-Fi and be doing all these things and be using your mobile banking app, for instance. Because you know the 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 issue with connecting to a public Wi-Fi is that even scammers are connected to a public Wi-Fi. And what they are doing is that it's very important. Somebody say, yes, you need like this. Oh, I have Unilag alumnus here. I, that's good. That's good. That's good. I have a cock idea. Okay. <laughs> no, Allah. So, of course, in Unilag, you know, public places like Senate House, or what they call Love Garden and all those things, right? Right? So, you know, um, you want to connect. <laughs> Somebody saying, you have a tech engineering building. Exactly. So, you want to connect to all this Wi-Fi. But should I tell you the truth? You don't connect to what... Anytime you connect to a public Wi-Fi, you are risking sharing your personal and sensitive information as you are using your phone to all these scammers because scammers are always a lot on public wi-fi because through wi-fi mm -hmm. you can monitor web traffic of people whoever mm -hmm. is using mm -hmm. their wi-fi you can you can monitor it so they connect to it monitor everything you are doing get all the personal information as much as they can get mm -hmm. while you are using the wi-fi mm -hmm. and you do not and the terrible thing is that some mm -hmm. people even use wi-fi public wi-fi to use your mobile banking app you don't want to do that now imagine yeah. this for instance guys imagine what is going to happen here imagine what we have when a froster have access to your personal information like your bvn of course we all know what we have all your card pin imagine what will happen when someone spy and monitor your activities online that's what can happen when you are using a public wi-fi just you tell your audience imagine what will happen they get all your information get information to your bank account you just realize one day you just woke up all the money in your account support you know, like they used to say you don't go right because of all these little things that we don't pay attention to and they mean a lot for us so look at this so what i want you to know guys is that not all free wi-fi is free put it in the chat box if you are following not all free wi-fi are free put it in the chat box to well, confirm you are following not all course. free wi-fi are free Yes. Thank you, Afusat. I see that. Temitayo, I see that. Yes, favor. Not all free Wi-Fi are free. Modupe, keep it coming. Not all free Wi-Fi are free. Raji, I can see that. Temitokpe, I can see that. Lassisi, I can see it. Yes, Solaiman, Karim, Hunli, Chioma, Benedita, I can see that. Akimbola, Tokpe, not all free Wi-Fi are free. You know why? Because... I used to tell people, if you connect anyhow to any Wi-Fi, you will collect anyhow. <laughs> I say, what, if what, you what? connect anyhow, you will what? You will collect anyhow. Because sometimes the intention of all these people who go ahead to install public Wi-Fi for you, free public Wi-Fi, sometimes the intention is to get personal information. You will think it's free. You are just connecting. But the point is, when you connect to a public Wi-Fi, you risk a lot of things. So only say, yes, connect to collect with two, two. Exactly. If you connect anyhow, you collect anyhow. Pule is on track. You say you connect, you collect with two, two. Exactly. So you have to be careful on how you connect to public Wi-Fi. That's the point I'm making here. And it's sacrosanct. I was even telling someone this, you know, when I, you know, travel from office, and I'm lodged in the hotel. I'm, you know, the room I'm being lodged, I'll be giving the Wi-Fi the room and I don't connect to all those Wi-Fi because I know better, right? I don't connect because you cannot, you, you don't even trust yourself, not to talk of trusting anybody. So you don't just connect to any Wi-Fi because there are risks. Because if you collect, connect anyhow, you collect anyhow. Thank you for that, Suleiman, right? Not all free Wi-Fi is free, right? So, what are public Wi-Fi and its risk? 
I've mentioned this. Karma can see what you do online, monitor your web traffic. Your personal sense information like BVM, bank card plugin number can be stolen. I've mentioned it. Scammers can even install malware, what you call virus for you. You just realize that your phone, your laptop is just misbehaving. You just realize that you have virus. They can install virus on your laptop or on your phone, even when you connect to a Wi Fi in the process of using that Wi Fi. So it's important to know that not all free Wi Fi is free. The question is now we don't know that, oh, you, you know, you cannot just connect to any Wi Fi, right? Oh, somebody said better the room for hidden camera. Oh, okay. Somebody check, said ignorance is killing. Exactly. Ignorance is killing. So, what another thing you now want to tell your audience is look, you have a, you now know that to connect to any public Wi-Fi is not just what you want to do. How do you now know when the Wi-Fi is safe at least before you connect? Number one, it asks you for a password before you connect. Some wi some Wi-Fi don't ask you for password. It's a red flag. They don't ask you for password. I know some places in this Lagos that you don't need anything to connect. Just on your Wi-Fi, connect. You don't need password, you don't need anything, you just connect. It's one of the red flags you want to watch out for. It is from a trusted source and reliable source, like Google Station Wi-Fi. For instance, there was a time in, in Lagos, maybe around 2018, when Google was installing Wi-Fi in strategic location like Computer Village in Ikeja, like Unilag. They also installed one in Unilag. You know, when the Wi-Fi is from a trusted source, you can still trust it, like Google Workstation, Google Station. But if it's not from a trusted source, the Wi-Fi is not safe. That's the point. And it is encrypted or protected. If you notice now, if you turn on your hotspots on your phone and someone wants to collect for Android, you see something like WEP, WP, WEP is wired equivalent privacy. WPA is wired privacy access. It is Android way of protecting whatever thing that is being shared on that network. That's why you see, when you activate your WP and WP, it asks you that you put a password on your hotspot. That's Android, the iOS way of, of trying to safeguard whatever thing you share on that network. So, it must be encrypted. If it's not encrypted, it's another thing for you to say wrong for your life. Another one is the network name aligned with the location. You cannot be in Ileki and you are seeing Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi name connect and die motion. And you two, you went to connect. Don't you know from the name, self is a, a signal for you. Connect and collect. You two, you went to connect motion and you are in Leki. So when the location to sometimes, if it contrasts where you are, then it's another red flag for you. And you can also use online testing to like F secure to be sure that the Wi-Fi. So what we are saying is a protocol like WP, WP, ensure that information sent is encrypted or scrambled. Then what you need to consider before choosing a Wi-Fi is to consider who is hosting the Wi-Fi that is the source. Who is hosting it? And what are the information you'll be sharing? Your bank information password. Don't go on a public Wi-Fi and be using your bank app and be doing sensitive things that involve sharing your personal information. You don't want to do that. And what, what who are those that may be connected to the network too? If it's a public Wi-Fi, scammers may be connected to it. I've mentioned this over and over again. Consider the activity you'll be doing and consider the location, right? So you have to get yourself protected, right? So the next thing we want to talk about is, is your password. It's very, very important to understand this. What do you think a person who intends to harm you will do when they get to know the password to your social media account or the pin to your bank account? What do you think they will do? They will pray for you, right? You don't want to get to that point where they get all this information. And I used to share a story here. Right, thank God I have somebody who is on this call who is an alumnus of Unilag. If you are, this is a true life story that happened, right? And I share it when I take this particular slide because sometimes we need to share some of these things for some of us to know the gravity of you know some of these things we take with levity, right? There is this guy and this lady that has been dating since 100 level, they were together, they do all things in common, you know. You know, when you get into 100 level now, you are. You, I'm on this journey to finish from this school, but let us go. To, let's be on this journey together. Be inside my boat. Let's cruise together, you know. They were together, dating each other. You know, not until level three. That's 300 level. When the lady discovered that, it's like this guy has found another girl that is now following. The lady was very curious, you know, and all of that. But you know the funniest thing? Because, you know, they've been together. They've shared things together. And all of that, and all of that. The lady told the guy, you cannot be dating another. This was not what you told me. You told me we should be on this boat together. And it's a journey that we should finish together. Now, how come we are in level three? 
and you want to opt out of the journey. No, this journey we must be together. The guy went ahead with the lady, the new lady image. You know what this lady did? If you are if you are here and you finish from here, like you know that in your 100 level, 200 level, there are some courses that you write. I mean, the exam is usually computer-based tests because there are a lot of people offering that course and it's practically impossible to mark, you know, scripts of maybe 5,000 students. So most of them opt for, most of those lecturers opt for, you know, CBT exam. Yes, and you recall that some years ago in Unilag, all you need to go and, somebody said GST courses. All you need to go and register the Unilag to go and write an exam. Then, I, I learned now that they've changed it. Then, is to, your, it's just to input your matric number as username and your surname as password. You know what this lady did? This lady went to the exam or before this guy, imputed his matric number because he knows it, imputed his password, and he logged into that exam. And the lady did not answer any question and he submitted for that guy. Hmm. And that was Finish. how that guy had an extra year. Extra year. Because that course was a prerequisite course. If you understand what I'm saying by prerequisite course, you know that there are some courses that if you don't pass, say, in 300 level, you cannot pass the, ad you cannot write the advanced one in 400 level. Mm. So that course was a prerequisite course. That was how that guy had an extra year for free and nobody could do anything. Why? What was the course? It is a question of what you share, your password, your personal information, right? If the personal information, for instance, was not known, maybe that wouldn't have happened. For instance, somebody said that's bad, of course, but maybe that wouldn't have happened. So it's a call. You should understand oh. that your personal information should be known by you and you alone. And we all want to avoid this case. Look at this man now. All of us want to avoid this situation. You can see my screen. Situation where ah, it is finished. Situation where ah, how did I get into this case? Situation where you know, people will say, ah, money has remained was so you understand all those kind of you want to avoid all those situations that are touches that people will say, hey, yeah, sorry, Pele, Pele. You want to, you want to avoid that. Somebody is asking if will this recording be sent to the group? I, I think so. I'm not sure, but the, we answered that. Somebody said, now, nah, of course, I'm more. personal information should remain personal. Ah, or more, yeah, my bro. You understand? So you see that. So we all want to avoid this situation. That was this, this was the situation that guy was at that time, I could imagine. The situation where I see my life. Right? So we all want to avoid this situation. That's why you have to take situations around password. Very serious. If you are not speaking, please mute yourself. I've said this countless times. Hmm? Mute yourself if you are not speaking. Yes, they meet your whole tikuwa. So exactly. So how do you not know when your password is weak? You want to tell them your password is weak when it contains only your name or your family name. Elijah. My name is Elijah. That's my password. Facebook, Elijah. That's my password. WhatsApp, Elijah. Instagram, Elijah. Everywhere, Elijah. What is your problem? It means that anybody can guess what your password is. Or your family because everybody's information is out there your name and all of that you see that so your date of birth some of us your day, your, especially i was taking this training somewhere at you know lagos government technical college at Agidimbi in Ikeja. you know it was the informal sector and i was trying to you know come down to their level and some of them alluded to the fact that their atm card pin is their date of birth some all in fact a larger percentage of them alluded to that you don't want to do that it's a sign that that thing is not secured because I can get your date of birth online. I can get it anywhere. So if your password is not your date of birth, then it's not one of the things you want. Some people is your favorite club, Chelsea, backer for life. That's your password. Some is common word like I love. Some is simple word like one, two, three, four, zero, 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 zero. Two, 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 three, 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 three. You don't want to do that. Some is keep on. Who is that person? Please mute yourself. It's not difficult. We are all adults now. Mute yourself. If, if I find out that you don't mute yourself, I will have no choice than to take you out of this call. Please mute yourself, eh? so that we can all hear ourselves. So keep all pattern like QWERTY. And some people, your password must be at least eight character long. Your password should be what? At least eight character long. It's a sign that your password is weak if it's less than eight character long. It's even good now. Before now, Website don't care whether your password is eight character. But now you see website asking that your password should be at least eight character long. But that's what makes it very difficult to guess. Look at the example of the password in a good news 1992. 
All I need to get this person password is the person's name and the date of birth. See another person, backer for life. All I need to get this is because I know the I mean, club you support. Then this class activity one, you now want to tell them to log on to this website and put in any of their password at all. The system will tell them the duration it takes for anyone to hack into that password. Guys, we are going to try that ourselves now. We are going to try it. Log on to this website. You can see on the screen. And put in any password. Of course, it's secured. There is S at the back of the HTTPS, and I've, I've confirmed this. I've done my due diligence. It's secured. Right? Log into this particular web page and put any password at all. I want within the next two minutes in the chat box, tell me the duration it takes for your password to be hacked and be sincere in the chat box. We are doing that in the next two minutes. After which I'll continue because we need to finish this in like a few minutes time. Yes. I'm waiting. All eyes on the chat box now. So I'm waiting. So if you are there, let me know you are there. Then put in any password at all. As many passwords you can think, just put. And it will tell you the duration it takes for someone to. I can put it in the chat box. Oh, yeah, guys, let's keep it coming. Let's keep it coming. Let's keep it coming. Guys, we'll go password. Sorry? Sorry, what did you say, please? Somebody is trying to say something. Who is that person? Okay. Yes, please. I didn't say you should put... No, Kunle, I'm not saying you should give me your password. I say input your password on the landing page of this website that's on the screen. So okay. once you put that password there, it will tell you the duration it takes for anybody to hack into that password. That's what I need to see. Not to share it. Stephen said it will take seven years. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Temitayo, it will take 12 days. That is a signal that that password is very, very weak, extremely weak. And you may want to consider changing that password immediately. Yes, thank you for your sincerity. I remember a place I went to take this session, you know, and we asked them to do this. Someone there was a particular person that it takes eight nanoseconds to act that password. Nanosecond is not even up to one second to act. It shows that that password is very, very weak. And you want to change it. Baba Tundi, I will stop writing on my screen. Well, thank you. Someone said it would take six years. What? Well, thank you. What did you say? Twelve century. Twelve century. The password must have come here. Just put mm -hmm. it on the chat box, yeah? Put it on the chat box. Baba Tundi, I will stop writing on my screen now. Eh? Adio, last 308 years. Hey, no Karim day. said, I type a password. He said zero second, and I type another. He said three hours. Karim no Latif and Adiola, Latif, sorry, Adiola, change those passwords. They are weak, very, very weak. Somebody said 400 trillion years. That means those passwords are relatively strong. Someone said 12 centuries. That means they are relatively strong. Why am I 17 days, Adiola? Please go and change that password immediately. 20 days, Lassisi Yusuf, go and change it. I tried my other password and it's 20, 20 century. Yeah, that other password is strong. Timitayo Emmanuel. Yeah, so guys, why am I trying? Why am I saying you should do this? Because this is what you also ask your participant to do. So the tip here is that the shorter the period of your password, the shorter the period it takes to hack it, the higher the risk. It means that you may want to change it immediately. So let's continue. What are the recipe for a strong password? I gave it an acronym here. How many of you eat as soon? If you eat as soon, you always remember this as soon. But just that you'll be a, 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 there will be a hell there. As soon eight. Your password must contain recipe. I say recipe for a strong password. Just like when you are cooking. What are the recipe that makes up that thing to make sure it's delicious and complete? Your password must contain alphabet in the same password. The L as soon, lowercase, that small letter number. The S symbols like art, like hashtag. Like question mark, those people whose password takes centuries, for instance, and years, you know, they have all these things I'm mentioning. It should also contain uppercase. Uppercase is capital letter. It should contain number in the same password mix, number, because it's a recipe. As soon, 
and it must it must be at least eight character long. That's the as weight. Eight to twelve character long. The more the character, the better. Look at the one I have here, for instance. I just crafted this from a capital letter C P, small letter S M E, number one to three, at comma hashtag. Right. Your password should be a combination of all these things I have mentioned. Right. And um, it will also help you. Right. Akiola, why are you writing on this screen? Can you guys just stop this? I mean, it's, it's ridiculous to be repeating the same thing over and over again. Please, please, let's stop that. Right? So it's important. So moving on, moving on. Then what are the other tips that you need to know to protect your password? Right? Use your password manager, right? It can be a website or app that help users save and organize their password. For instance, there's Google Password. And these people are still writing on my screen. What is the meaning of this? All right. So ways to protect my password. Please desist from writing on the screen. Eh? We are we are all adults. Desist from writing. Once I see anybody write on the screen, I'll take you off the call. And I mean it. Because as you're writing on the screen, I'm finding it difficult to read what I have in this slide, because what you are writing is blocking some of the text. So you use password manager, right? So there are websites or application that helps you manage your password. For instance, we have Google password manager. That's why I see sometimes when you go to some websites, Google will ask you which of your password are you using. That one will help you manage your password. In case somebody will say, what if, because I always advise that you have password for multiple accounts, different password. Somebody will ask, how will I remember all this password now and all those things? That's why you can use password manager like Google, like the feature by Google or password one or last pass, right? Then you choose, change your password frequently, at least three to six months. Yes, it's important, right? Organizations even do that. In fact, where I work, for instance, after like three months, you will not be able to access your email, your work email. If you don't change your password, you'll be required as a matter of compulsion to change that password, right? So you have to change the password because even when those password has been, you know, guessed or someone has gotten, at least if you change it frequently, um, you will be able to maneuver that. Do not use the same password for many accounts, Facebook. Some of you use the same password, Facebook, Elijah, WhatsApp, Elijah, um, Instagram, Elijah. No, you don't want to use the same password for multiple accounts. Then you want to use multiple factor authentication, other verification, yes, there are some accounts that will require you to add other verification, like maybe your thumbprints, maybe like questions like where you were born, questions like some other thing, just to confirm that it's you. That's what we call multiple factor authentication. That thing is currently active on WhatsApp. Multiple factor authentication, it's like better help you secure your personal information. And another thing I'm strong on is that always update your software and application. Some of us here, our application, Facebook, WhatsApp, everything will be asking you in like one month. If you check your place, so now you see a lot of your application asking you to update. Please ensure you update your application regularly. If you don't update your application, you run the risk of you know, sharing your personal information or compromising them. You know why? Because anytime there's a newer version of a particular software, the developers have fixed some patches, some security patches, right? In that software that makes it more secure. That's why anytime there is an update, you have to update it, regardless of the data size. Somebody will say, hey, what if some of them are running two gig? If you look at the risk of not updating your application compared to the benefits, you will know that is, you know, actually helpful when you update it. So the next thing we want to talk about is watch out for online scammers, right? Imagine this. I mentioned earlier on that some of us are full call from somebody who mentioned your name, everything you do, and you realize at one point that you don't even know the person. After the person mentioned your name, the school you went to, everything you have done, you realize that you don't even know the person, right? We have received that kind of call before. How I many of you know you receive a text from a number asking you to submit your BVN? and all of that? So what all these all these people do is what I call fishing. Right, but before we get into fishing, right, we, we are going to have another class activity too. I want everybody to look at my screen now. Look at my screen and pay attention. Let me put it on slideshow so that you see it well for those using phone to join this call. Now, can somebody tell me of these two Facebook landing page, which do you think is legit? Which do you think is not legit? Just tell me. 
because all these things are very, very important. Look at it intently. Which one do you think is? Yes, Stephen said, yes, I did receive a call just yesterday. Yes. Thank you for that confirmation. So look at this. Everybody in the, we are doing this in the next two minutes. If you believe image one is a legit landing page of Facebook, put in the chat box one. If you believe image two is a legit landing page of Facebook, put in the chat box image two. Thank you, guys. Somebody said, when are we going on break? I mean, uh, we are not going on break. We are ending very soon. In like 30 minutes, we are out of here. Okay. Jagade said, page two. Raji said, page one is legit. Jagade said, page two is legit. Lassisi, page two. Ojewade, you made two. Choma, you made two. Mohamed, you made two. Babatunde, you made two. two. Moibade, you made two. I did some new Lua to be me too. I full sat over a be image too. Now, why why do you think it's image too? People say image too. Why do you think image too is legit? I just need one person to unmute and tell me why. And I need one person to also unmute and tell me why image one is legit. Yes, why? One person out of those who said image too. Or oh, some people are just... <laughs> or some of you are just following on that image too. You say, if someone can say image too, then it's great. It's great. It's great. It may be because of the Facebook uh, logo there. Because of the Facebook logo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other person? You may too. Any other person? I may too. Yes. Okay. Adela said, I think both pages are legit. I love that. Yes. Any other person why you think you may too is legit? Any other person, please? Lassis is able to manage it. I love that. Any other person, please? Suleiman Yusuf, are you speaking? Hello. Please go ahead if you are speaking. What? My name is Alao. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Alao. Yes. I think there is something something wrong with these two pages. Because I can't find forget password yet. All I can see is for, forget the account. Okay. Initially, okay. I, picked, I picked two. But now that I'm going through everything now, I can see that there is no forget password there. Are you getting it? What we can All see I is can forget see. account. Okay. Yeah, forget account. So I'm not sure if they are using that account. Uh, there was a time, there was a time when Facebook usually have this forget account, actually. Yeah. But I don't think that you are right. But I, I love your detailing. But even yeah. going to that extent of checking and seeing that, oh, as little as forget, these two forget, it shows that um you you put some effort into that thank you for that uh, but which do you think is now so are you now saying both pages are not legit is that your position i'm still going, I'm still going for the set number two because that's what i picked but i don't have to check everything around like that okay number yeah. two is legit right yeah that's what i appreciate now guys thank you very much you know why we need to do this even from the trainer ourselves is that yeah. so that when we get to the people we are training we're also going to ask them so I'll be giving them something very detailed, right? Now, guys, yeah. should I tell you why we are doing this? All this is a question around fishing. Hmm? All of you know the story of Hush Puppy, right? One of the reasons yeah. why that guy was very successful at what he does is that what he usually do is fishing. What is fishing? Fishing is a cyber crime. When you try to study an organization, you study everything about them, including their website. You can even clone their website. And the intention of phishing is always to, you know, create something that looks strikingly the same as the original, you know, copy of that thing in order to defraud your own target audience. 
That's what makes that guy very successful. In fact, at the point when they interviewed him, sometimes they spend three months, six months to study companies before they attack them. They don't just jump to go and attack. They study them, study the way they send email, study their colors. Every company has color, right? Study their color, like Facebook, blue and white. Study the way they send email, study the way they recruit, so that by the time they are done and they come out to portray themselves as if they are from that company, it will be difficult from their victim to know whether they are from the, that company originally or not. And that is the essence of this page I'm showing you. It takes to be extra careful and diligent to overcome phishing. Anybody can clone any website that looks like Facebook, that looks like even your company's website. Sometimes you even see people being victim of employment scam in Nigeria. You all know the story of a woman some time ago that was killed, sometimes in one of these eastern states because she was, she was promised um, a job, right? So what some of what these guys do is that they feed, P-H-I-S-H, right? That's what they do. Now, looking at this now, it, it takes beyond just looking at the page. In fact, somebody said it's confusing. You know, in fact, all of them look the same thing. Yes, that's what fishing is. That's intention. But if you don't take your time to look deeply, you realize that one thing about fishing to be able to scale through it is your ability um, you know, to do your due diligence and look intently. If you check image one, it's not showing Facebook. Abby, this is showing Facebook. That's one. Number two, if you notice when you are using the web browser, I'm zooming now so that you guys can see what I'm saying. If you notice when you are using, I hope you can see what I'm zooming. Is he also zooming over there? Yes, sir. Is it zoomed over there? Good. If you look at this web page, for instance, right? Are you guys following me? Yes. If you look at this web page, for instance, yes. this one, you yes, still have sir. the numbers. You, Thank you. You still have the number still going in the URL. The number is still going one, four. But if you check this one, when we go to five to five, what happened? You have three dotted lines. Normally, website don't view all the URL of the landing page in in entirety like this. It will get to a point where you see these three dots. That's another thing that makes this image too legit. Do you see that? Facebook and as little as this. Every other thing on both pages are the same. Every other thing. Can you see that? Another thing is that you also see that for the second image, the create account here is almost aligning with what you have here. Do you see that? Guys, are you following? Do you see that? Yes. Look at this one. Look at misalignments. Yes, yes, we are following. Look at the misalignments in this one. Can you see? Yes. So it's as easy as all yes, those things to be able to understand. It's as easy as all these things. So the, sec the second one is legit. Why this one is cloned? The image one is cloned. Why image two is legit? Did you get my point, guys? So all these things yeah. are questions around phishing, like I said. So it's just a cyber crime trying to clone things. And before you know it, they even create some fake website to get people to come and pay. And as you are paying, you think you are making payments for what you are doing, but that money is going to the account of those who have intended to scam you. Even some people who are falling victim for employment scam, right? By creating a fake website. Let me give you an example of a woman. Look at this woman now. Look at what she's saying. This happened in Nigeria sometime in 2021. Right, she was enrolling for an enlistment into Nigerian Immigration Service. She was to pay one thousand five. Look at what happened. Submission field. She used her husband ATM card. At first, when she put the bank detail, the website deducted four thousand naira, and the application did not go through. Mind you, one five is even what was given as a submission field. Right now, it's putting. She imputed the uh, ATM card details. Four thousand was deducted at first. Still, the application did not go through. She made another attempt with her own debit card. Another 5,000 error was deducted, making how much everybody? 9,000 error. Whereas the submission fee is one five. Right? At, at the end of the day, look at her submission. Look at what she said. I didn't know the job offer was fake because it looked real, but I was desperate and wanted to get the job badly, so I had to believe. So that's what these guys do. They clone websites, great force employment, for you, for people, they create website, clone them, all in the name of trying to, 
tell people to come and apply for a job. But before you know it, what the idea, their intention is to scam. Look at this Mrs. Online Inca story, for instance, in 2021, right? So that's one of the things these guys do. You have to be very conscious of what you do. Then the next question you want to ask is, how do you now spot? Because I, like I mentioned at the beginning of this class, of this session, it's one thing to know that there is a, a problem is existing or we have been falling victim for something. It's another thing. One of the objectives, our aim and objective of this session is now to make sure that at least you are now in a better position where you are well informed. You don't want to ask yourself, how do you spot online scammer? Number one, they post like they are from someone you know, colleague, they will tell you family, they will even tell you from government. You hear, some of you will see a WhatsApp channel, like what I have here. Their customer due to BVM validation in compliance with CBM bank directive, the ATM card is being deactivated, contact customer care. Do you know how we know that this thing is not legit? Number one, I want to be able to know when these are not legit. They are not properly spelled. Look at this. So due to BVN violation, compliance with CBN Bank. Is there anything like CBN Bank? CBN, the meaning of CBN itself is Central Bank of Nigeria. So those are the things you want to be looking, watching out for. A situation where people will reach out to me and say, let me check, is this thing fished? Look at this. This one red flag, CBN Bank. No bank will send you this. Correct? The ATM has been, look at deactivated. Deactivate underscore activated. Is this correct? This is not a correct English word. D underscore activated. No. They will not tell you number to call. No, that is wrong. You will know that this is free. Some of us have seen this kind of text before. So mm -hmm. some of them, they try to gain your trust. They say things to get you emotional. They will tell you, if you don't do this, you may lose it. Yeah. All in the, on the, you know, very to make sure that you're able to do it, you want to do that. They will tell you to act now or they took over something. They will ask for your personal information. They will overpay you and ask you to refund. This was, you know, going around, making rounds some time ago. They will overpay you. You just see, maybe somebody is supposed to pay you 100K. You see 150,000, they will call you and say, eh, we overpay you 150,000, please, can you return this? You don't want to fall for that kind of thing. If truly you are overpaid, approach your bank and let your bank do that. Or such person should approach his or her bank. Bank's system is connected. They have a way of reaching out to each other to get payment settled. It is not the duty of the person, of somebody to call you to say, I overpay you, come and refund. Is a way to scam you. You now begin to try to refund, enter your ATM card details to pay the person back or make a transfer. Immediately you do that, you have shot yourself in the leg. So some of them promise you something that sounds too good to be true. They will tell you there's a promo giving like five percent of the costs. You don't even need to go and share it with your family member. You need to know that is wrong. No person will give you a promo and give you ninety five percent off of the cost. In it's not possible anywhere in the world. Ninety five percent off. Right, and you see people sending broadcast on WhatsApp and uh, order for this, you get at five percent, and people will still forfeit. Sometimes I ask myself, maybe because of my background in finance and accounting, I ask myself, how, how will someone produce and give you ninety five percent of the cost price? It's not possible. Some of them will offer you something you need at that time to get your trust. What are now the normal tips and tricks you should know? Don't click links in email or text if you must. Click that you ensure that the website has an S, HTTPS. S at the back of HTTP means secured. It means that that website is secured, right? It means that the website is secured. And, uh, you know, things like SSL and TSL tell you that a website is secure. Exactly, Kunle. Right? So you also want to watch out for words that are not spelled well. I gave you an example of the one I, I just showed you now, T underscore activated. Another one is CBM Bank. You know, you also want to watch out. That's red flag to know that this thing is a scam. All right? Look at that thing. They will watch out for what they are not spelled with. They will ask you to log into some accounts through a text. Don't log into any account from a text or email. Don't do that. Do not call an unknown number from a text. They will tell you, call a number. Look at the one I attached here. Call 07030 to activate. Don't do that. It's wrong. Right. Immediately you do that, you download your information on the other end. And you don't share personal sense information like your CVV. I mentioned CVV is the three unique number at the back of your ATM card. Right. Next, fake news. We're almost wrapping up. Fake news, right? What are fake news? What we are just trying to say here is that, for instance, look at what happened here. Janet, for instance, there was a time, during the time of Ebola, they will tell you that you should put soap. I said soap, no. Salt inside warm water. Use it to take your bits. Usually, key, I mean, pure Ebola. How many of you remember that? When people were circulating that during Ebola, the outbreak of Ebola. 
anyone yes 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 exactly yeah exactly. exactly so they will tell you but the honest truth is this is not true but you know sometimes because i will not blame some of us you know because sometimes when you see things like this you want to make sure just in the quest, in your own good mind, you just want to make sure that your family member are secure, are safe. You just share with them. Sometimes you don't, you know, check and all of that. All this is speaking about fake news. The question is, what are fake news? Fake news is any news or story that aren't true. Or they are not 100% accurate. Look at the screenshot I attach here. The Apple customer, your iPhone has been found today at 11.10 a.m. View its current location, HTTP something, 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 Apple. So some of these things, some of them are fake news. You know, you see people going online there, obvious of fake news. So all we are saying is that sometimes when you say new, before you share, at least verify. That's what we are saying. It's a question of verification. Verify, investigate the source. Verify it. Always confirm every information before you send it to others. Regardless of what the information looks like and you quickly want to share. We want to make sure that you take your time, you do your due diligence before you share it with others. It's quite important. Now, what are the simple ways to identify fake news? Number one, you check the source. Who is the person who, who is that person sending it, right? You check, why has this story been reported? For instance, during the election period, you see people trying to backstab themselves. You know, two people vying for a position, you see... An article somebody said, Oh, that guy, when we were in primary school, he usually is he's a thief. When you put something somewhere, you usually see. So is it that person you want to you want to you want to give your you know your the resources of the states? If you do that, the same person that usually still pays in secondary school, we also steal our resources. So don't vote him. You know, it's a fake news that if you don't take your time to verify, you realize that. You know, so you want to con you want to consider the source. That's the point. And who is also sharing the news at the time? Before you consider any that is, you want to check who is also sharing it. Is point reporting it? Is this day reporting it? Is guy there and reporting it before you start sharing, right? Because those guys too, before they report anything on the pages of their newspaper, they have a team that check those things. They do their due diligence to check for the guy. Then you ask yourself, who else is also reporting this story? If it's not re reporting anywhere else. Don't just jump on it. Take your time to verify. Then ask yourself, does this sound right? This thing that I'm saying, does this sound right? Then you can also check online if something is truly happening. If somebody said, put um, salt inside us, what I drink. I also want to check online. Is it true? Does this cure this thing truly? Then you can also check if some pictures attached to some write-up online are legit, right? There's a website you can also check that to be sure. Then you watch out for false evidence. There are some headlines that are false. Please, excuse me, please. All right, guys. Sorry, thank you very much. So, you also want to check if the picture is real. And you watch out for fake headline. So the last but not the least, cyberbullying and harassment. This is very, very important. In fact, a lot of people are falling victim for this. And it has gotten to the point where, you know, people have been rejected, downcasted by cyberbullying and harassment. In fact, if I have some of us here, some of us might have been cyberbullied here, right? Some of us might have been cyberbullied here, yeah, right? So it happens. Uh, Please, guys, hold on. It's happened. Just give me a second, please. Um, just a second. I'm with you. Just want to. All right, guys. So a lot of people have been cyber bullied, you know, and it has led to a lot of things. So imagine this, eh? some comments like you are a failure, you are ugly, I hate you on Facebook and WhatsApp. You have people saying that to people and they post embarrassing picture of people online, right? Embarrassing picture of them. Bullying is not just physical, like you are eating somebody. You can also be bullied online, 
it happens. Now, I will just, just look at this, for instance. Look at what we have here. This is the story of somebody that is just hired into a company. And look at the reaction of the um, colleague. Look at it. Somebody say, what? Calling the kid to black. Hypocrisy at its best. Somebody say, this is a joke. Group with what? They are telling the new team member, how do you group that guy with us? Right? Please put her in this group so we can group her and groom her the right way. You know, different comments. Another person is saying, Someone add that to this group. Another is saying, so if we we are not sheep, then we are not. Do you understand? So different things, people call it hypocrisy. You know, you are a sheep. You know, imagine you just share a picture of you know, people sharing their wedding pictures online. I see comment like, look at that babe, Sha. Look at how she black, like something. Look at, you know, would you like back him, Kardashian? You post yourself and your wife online. Some people say, look at that girl forming, would you like back him, Kardashian? You know, different comments you see online. Some of us can relate with what I'm saying. That you know can make people go back and feel bad. Some people, you know, any comments you put online that will make people, if you're in Lagos, for instance, you understand what I'm saying. That will make people think of going to jump inside lagoon or take their life. You don't want to be found doing that. So don't cyber bully people. And that's one of the things you want to teach your audience. Go back and tell them that bullying is not just physical, you can also bully people online. Don't say words to people like you are a loser. Look at this picture. The same person, different people. You are a loser. You are stupid. You don't know what you are doing. You can never make it in life. You know, all those things people say, right? That's cyberbullying. People do it on Facebook, on Twitter, especially on Twitter or what we call X now. You know, statements that are cruel that can be but the most important thing is how to undo it. And what I used to tell people is you don't need to fight back or join others to drag the person. Rather, report the person. And you can report now. Facebook, Instagram have made life easier. You can use the report icon to report that person in question. And you see Facebook, I mean, or Meta, the group name now taking action. They can take down that account, for instance, or they can block the person or make the person lose his or her followership. Yes, Kunle said it's very rampant this day. Yes, that's why this training is important. You use the reports icon. There's a report icon on Facebook, on Instagram, even on WhatsApp, that you can report that person. I use you know, you narrate your deed and you see the meta team taking it up. And the most important thing is that if you're in a place where people are being dragged or being cyberbullied, be an upstander. Don't be a bystander. They are two different things. An upstander is somebody, uh, oh, sorry, an, a bystander. Let me start with that. Somebody who thinks things happen and does not react to that thing, does not do anything. He's just watching it. For instance, you see some people, you see an accident happening. You are an, an, on an accident scene. That's just a typical example you can relate to. I see some people trying to rescue the people, and some people would put up their phone and start doing, you know, taking pictures and taking videos while people, you know, in that accident, their life would have been saved. Probably just help do this, do that, and you save their life. But you see some people, rather than to do that, they start taking pictures. So that's a bystander. But who is an upstander? An upstander is somebody who watches things happen and reacts positively. What we are saying is that when you see people being bullied, stand up for them online, encourage others not to bully them. In that same thread, don't jump people to bully and don't be the reason why, you know, people are thinking or having suicidal thoughts. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have gone to the we have gotten to the end of this session. So, I don't know if you have any question for me. Maybe the next five ten minutes for that. If there's any question, any clarification, yes, any question. Hello, sir. We have a question. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Thank you very much for the training. Thank I you. just have a particular observation when you um, display those pictures, the Facebook pictures. So I really okay. want clarity on that. In my view, I think it only depends on the, uh, uh, it's a function of the devices that were used to assess that link. Because I could see slider on the um, image too. There are sliders, top and um, the bottom slider. So in a situation where we are um, educating people who are into web design or thereabouts, they can always have that as a debate line to say, this other device is whole, is showing this entire screen somehow. Why the other? There are sliders be, um, besides. So that may be a point to say that does not utterly make the other one genuine Why the other one isn't. Okay, thank you for that question. Yes, you may be right, right? 
You may be right, but the most yeah. important thing at this point is that if you check the picture, let me go back to let me go back to the picture. Um, you know, one thing about this whole thing is that it takes you to look very, I mean, to look into the pictures intently to be able to see the one that is fished. And sometimes the best way to do that sometimes is to look very intently at some of the very, very petty or little things that actually virtually everybody will not pay attention to. So or even go online to go and check the official websites of that particular company. For instance, you always know that the official website of universities, for instance, we always end with something like uh, the university name and edu or any higher institution of learning, edu.ng or edu.whatever, right? So you want to go there sometimes to check. And I just use this picture as an example. For instance, there are still some other things I would have shown you, but I don't have it on this current laptop here that I'm sharing with you. There are certain things I would have shown you. You realize that if you check, the little things at this point, at the point when Facebook was using this particular um um this particular what's the right one interface yeah at the point where they were using this particular interface this is what you will see are you with me sorry what's the name of the person who just asked this question sorry Timitayo, sir. Timitayo, thank you so at the point when facebook at that point this was what the interface looked like you always have facebook very close to Creating new account. I understand what you mean, but it depends on the device. If it's mobile or you're using web or desktop view, for instance, do you understand what I'm saying? That's what you mean. So I understand yes, what you're saying. But at that point, this is what the interface looks like. At that point, if I want to do that, now maybe now if I check, but now I'm not even sure you can really visit Facebook website because most times when you come to Facebook website now, it will redirect you to download the app or the software. Most times, like now. So what they are trying to do is to redirect people. To the app panel, but at that time, this is what it looks like, right? You see the Facebook by the side, you see create new account, but this does not have it at that time. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so it's not a matter of slider or something, it doesn't have it. At that. And if you check, most times when you get to the, this point, you see websites having this thing in the URL sometimes, at, you understand this three dotted line. Right, but this you see how the numbers going. Does it mean that this number will keep going? No, that's another thing. Mustafa, I well don't know. You're writing on the screen. Do you understand what I'm saying? And another thing yes, you want to look at is the alignment. The alignment here looks no okay. No UI UI UX designer, for instance, will not be very particular about alignment in graphics design, for instance, which I also do. Right, we don't joke with alignment when you are designing because that's what gives beauty. To what you are doing. So if you check the alignment here, look at it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's very, very faulty. But this is still a yeah. bit alarm. Don't forget that this is like a section of the shot that was taken. We didn't take the entire session. Do you understand? So this still looks yeah, a bit yeah. aligned. Do you see? Yes. Do you see? Yes. Uh -huh. So because the, the yes, intent sir. of any UI UX designer is to make sure that the interface communicates, because picture do you communicate with the users. So you want to make sure that the interface communicates well with whoever is using it. And it's, 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 it's good for sighting. You, when you see it, you are like, oh, this looks nice. Well understood, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So those are the three things you want to let them know. And let them that time, maybe some 34 years ago, when Facebook started. Did you get it? Does that answer your question, Semitayo? Can you hear me? Oh my goodness. Yes, it does. It does. I it does, I, it does. Okay, okay. Thank you. you sir. So, sir, somebody yes. said, Can we have the slide? Can we have the slide? Yes, your your um the host we reach out to you on that. Yes, say so fat we speak more to that. Yeah. So is that all for now? Then if that is all for oh, now. I will Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello, sir. Please have a slide for that picture. Slide for that picture. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
Because you are breaking, please. Hello, you are breaking. You may want to drop a chat. You are breaking. Please drop a chat. Or am I the only one who cannot hear? Am I... Oh my goodness. Am I the only one who cannot hear her, please? How does please confirm you can? She's no, breaking. No, I can't hear her. She's breaking also. She's breaking. She's breaking. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we can't hear you. So I I mean, if you can drop the chat, drop it now. If you can't, just drop the chat with your host. They will get the question across to me and I will answer it. Eh? I think that will be all for now. So my name is Elijah Falabi. You can check me up on LinkedIn. Right? So, guys, thank you very much for your time. Seifat, over to you. Thank you. Seifat, can you hear me? Okay, um, Elijah, are you done? Yes, I am. I am. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the session. Okay, everyone, please fill the attendance before you leave. Um, someone is saying the attendance is not opening. That's not true. Um, there are already responses on the attendance form, which means it's